My name is Caitlin Yeager, Director of Heritage Programs for Missouri Humanities. Our mission is to enrich lives and strengthen communities by connecting Missourians with the people, places, and ideas that shape our society. Thank you so much for joining us today for our three-part Heritage Tourism Workshop, part of our Cultural Heritage Workshop Program dedicated to providing tools and resources necessary for communities to reevaluate cultural heritage assets, improve community involvement, and increase tourism and economic development opportunities. This is our second webinar of our workshop today, and we're joined by Marcy Bennett, Executive Director of the St. Joseph Convention and Visitors Bureau, and also, I'm sure, a proud board member of Missouri Humanities. We are so thankful that she's uh, dedicated so many years of service to our organization. She does great things for us, so we're very thankful to have her. Marcy will detail the formation of Highway 36 Heritage Alliance and learn how this regional approach works across multiple counties to market tourism and build upon one another's cultural heritage. If you missed our 10 a.m. webinar this morning with the Missouri Division of Tourism, it is available to view on our Facebook page. Whether you're joining us through Zoom or watching on Facebook Live, we invite you to be part of the conversation. If you're on Facebook, feel free to comment to let us know you're watching or to ask questions for us to consider. If you're on Zoom, feel free to submit questions uh, in one of two ways. So you can use either the chat feature, just the regular chat box feature that you see on the bottom of your screen, or there's the Q&A feature where you type in a question and submit it and that gets sent directly to me. If you enjoy our program today and are interested in seeing more from Missouri Humanities, please check us out on Facebook or on our website for the most up-to-date information about our events. We also have a really great membership program that launched last year where benefits include free books, discounted tickets to special programs and access to members only events. To become a member, simply visit mohumanities.org and click become a member. At the conclusion of each webinar today, a survey will pop up on your screen. I would really appreciate it if you could all take some time to let us know what you thought of the presentation. Um, so when I end the webinar today, it'll be like a little link that pops up. So don't exit out right away. Be sure to click that link and take a short survey and let us know what you thought. These surveys are very important to us as we continue to bring public programming to Missourians and work toward a more thoughtful, informed, and civil society. So with that, I am happy to turn this over to our good friend, Marcy Bennett, Executive Director of St. Joseph's Convention and Visitors Bureau. So Marcy, go ahead and take it away. Let's hear about Highway 36. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, as a little intro, um, I am a Missouri Tiger. That's where I went to college. I, um, my background is in hotel management, um, in marketing, um, most Recently, before I moved here, recently, as in I moved here in 93, um, I ran a resort on Mackinac Island for five years um, and have been the executive director of the St. Joseph Convention and Visitors Bureau since 93. Um, I'm the immediate past chair of the Missouri Tourism Commission, of course, serve on the Humanities Council, which rocks. They are great. Please buy a membership. Um, and also serve on the State Archives Local um, Records Board. Um, the Highway 36 thing is truly rural tourism development and collaboration. Um, I haven't timed this. I might ramble, I might not. It might be a short road, it might be a long road. We'll just find out. Um, but we are the Missouri Highway 36 Heritage Alliance alluding to heritage tourism. Um, and we have coined our, our little slogan as the way of American genius. Um, we encourage people to travel Highway 36, you see it on your screen, um, instead of I-70. Okay, so who hates I-70? Like everybody. Um, anytime I go to Jeff City, Columbia, St. Louis, I take Highway 36. There are no big billboards. There are few big trucks. The only thing big on Highway 36 are the bugs during harvest time. Um, and that is truly rural tourism development. You know, those bugs are gonna come out when the combines are out there. Um, plus, there's a, there's a bathroom every 30 miles if you are a female of my age. So you would understand that. I hope Marcy, I hear you. Real quick, this is so funny that you mentioned this because- uh... Um, we actually, we just took a road trip out West and we chose to go 36 instead of 70. Uh -huh. And it was, it was 10 more minutes to get across the state to go no kidding. North from, yeah, from St. Louis, North 
to Hannibal yeah. and cross 36 is only 10 more minutes than going 70. Yeah. So, and it's, and so, it's much so much so, more peaceful. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's how I feel about Highway 36. You cannot get me on I-70. Um, but anyway, it's nothing against Highway 70. Um, anyway, okay, now I've got to, oh, look at that. I did it. Um, I am over 50, so my technology is not so good. I'm just telling you guys up front, and I'd love to hear you laughing in the background, but I can't. Um, actually, um, Highway 36 was part of the Pikes Peak Ocean to Ocean Highway, which was one of the very first transcontinental highways from New York City to San Francisco. And they said it went from Hell's Gate, which is a spot in New York City, to Heaven's Gate, which is San Francisco. It followed what was the old Hound Dog Trail, which was where the settlers went along and they came across the northern part of Missouri and actually through Indiana and Illinois um, to get to their jumping off points going west on everything from the Gold Rush to um, the Oregon Santa Fe Trail or Oregon Trail, Oregon California Trail. And then after the old Hound Dog Trail, that's where the Hannibal St. Joseph Railroad came into existence. And Highway 36 basically follows that. Um, but th the whole thing is called the Pikes Peak Ocean to Ocean Highway, which was established in 1912. And it is actually 3,584 miles. Yes, I have that written down because I would not remember that. Um, and the Hannibal to St. Joseph Railroad or portion of the Pikes Peak Ocean to Ocean Highway is 192.8 miles going from Hannibal all the way across Northern Missouri to St. Joseph. In 1912, um, the headquarters for the Pikes Peak Ocean to Ocean Highway, all the way from New York to San Francisco, was determined to be in St. Joseph. So we were the headquarters of the whole thing in 1912, as well as the headquarters for the Jefferson Highway, which went from Winnipeg all the way down to New Orleans. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm a little slow here. Oh, wrong way. So from Hound Dog Trail, and look look at the uh, the mules and all that kind of stuff, to the Hannibal St. Joseph Railway, to one of the early signs that they had out there promoting Highway 36, shortest route from Indianapolis to Denver, which is absolutely true. Okay, so in the, in the early 1990s, um, a friend of mine in the tourism business, Faye Bly from Hannibal, and I would meet at different meetings and it's like, oh my gosh, we need to do something with Highway 36. We need to promote that Highway 36 is the coolest way to go. And we were both busy at our jobs and, you know, that wasn't our job. And we kept talking about it, talking about it. But finally, in 2004, a group of us got together and actually formed a little group to, to talk about things. And we were officially incorporated in 2011 as a unique um, entity. And when we first started it, we took the places along the way that might be able to be partners. We took Hannibal, Macon, Marceline, Chillicothe, Cameron. St. Joe, and later added Kirksville and Brookfield. This is all volunteer. So, I mean, we're getting paid to do our jobs. We're not getting paid to do this kind of thing. And sometimes your board thinks, well, why are you promoting Cameron? Or if you're in Hannibal, why are you promoting Marceline? We need to promote our own destination. It's all about developing product and being able to cross-reference because visitors really don't care where Buchanan County ends or Carroll County ends or Livingston County ends. 
they want the experience. So that's what we really pushed. And all of our boards really um, were behind us. Um, again, it's an all volunteer group, but we knew that this was the right thing to do to promote together rather than all alone. Oh, I went the right way. Cool. So we got a light bulb, a genius light bulb. Um, what is along Highway 36? Who were geniuses or were genius inventions? We have Mark Twain, General John J. Pershing, General Ulysses S. Grant, Walt Disney, Sterling Price, General Omar Bradley, J.C. Penny and Hamilton, Walter Cronkite was from St. Joe, the home of sliced bread, as you see right there in Chillicothe, Pony Express, Jesse James, A.T. Still, the father of osteopathic medicine in Kirksville. So we just decided that we were going to make our tagline the way of American genius. So that's what we are. We're geniuses, don't you know? Um, okay, I got to, sorry. So there was a group that had worked for over 40 years putting together the project to make Highway 36 four lane all the way across. I'm sorry, it was 60 years that they did it. And they worked their tails off. They had to get each county to agree to be part of this deal. And it was amazing. But finally in 2010, it was completed four lanes all the way across. People um, like Ed Douglas and from Chillicothe, Jack Briggs from Cameron worked on it forever. In fact, Jack Briggs' father was the very first um, secretary of the Highway 36 Association. Um, so they got it done. It was four lane in 2010. We had a big party. We had reenactors. We had all kinds of stuff. I'm going to show you this. You probably can't see this, but one of the things they did, like in the 50s, they had, and this is totally incorrect, but they had the Highway 36, um, oh, what is it? The um, Miss Perfect Highway 36, Miss Perfect 36. And I mean, they exploited it to the ends of the earth, but that's part of our history. Um, but anyway, once they had it completed and they'd done all of their work, they said, okay, we've got the road constructed four lanes. You need to now promote it. So we, you know, we came together in 2004. Um, we had to ramp things up really quick once they passed that off to us. So um, in 2011, we immediately worked on bylaws, articles of incorporation, membership program, and 501c3 status. And again, it's all volunteers. Um, you have to believe in the bigger picture to get it done and just dedicate some of your time to it. So as we were doing that, um, we thought, okay, Highway 36. Yeah, it's from Hannibal to St. Joe, and we've got Macon and Chillicothe, whatever. But you know, there are some really cool things north of Highway 36 and south of Highway 36. So we determined that our Highway 36 corridor was going to go 36 miles north and 36 miles south. So we can include Brunswick, the home of the largest pecan. Um, we could include Jamesport. We could include Kirksville, A.T. Still, the father of osteopathic medicine. We could include a lot of things. So if you're within 36 miles north or 36 miles south of Highway 36, you can be involved in our, um, our corridor. Now, the other thing is, and I've always said this, if you can get there in 36 minutes, it still is included. So Jamesport is like 40 minutes, but if I drive like a bat out of heck, I can get there in 36 minutes. So they're included too. Um, 
So let's keep going. Oh, the other thing, no, back here. The other thing about this corridor um, for political reasons, uh, not political reasons, but what we realized is that at a legislative level, this really gives us a lot of clout within this um, yellow band that you see, we have nine direct counties, Missouri counties that directly are attached to the Highway 36 highway. There are 25 counties within that yellow line or yellow band, 25 counties. What does Missouri have? Like 110 counties? 25 is a whole lot of counties. We have 14 Missouri House District representatives in there. We have five Missouri Senate districts represented there. And the entire swath is included in Sam Graves Congressional District. So we have great legislative visibility. We just have to work on how to use that. But we've got great coverage as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so we got to start at the beginning. Um, and we had to figure out a vision and a mission. And a vision propels you forward, and a mission focuses you. So, our vision for Highway 36 is to establish the way of American genius as one of the most celebrated highways in the world. That's pretty lofty, but your vision should be lofty. Um, you know what, when I sit down, and I know there's other people on here that are familiar with the Highway 66 organization and everything, we are doing a whole lot more than they are to keep things going. We just don't have a song. So if anybody is a writer, um, musician, come up with a Highway 36 song that we could coin, that would be awesome. So that's our vision, most celebrated highway in the world. Our mission, quite honestly, is what we work with on a daily basis, is to inspire travel along Highway 36 by curating and sharing unique stories and experiences about its history, people, and innovations. Is that the humanities or what? I'm thinking it is. Um, plus, it makes money for each of those communities where people stop and spend time. So I have to change this. Okay, so we had some goals in the beginning, improve educational and cultural experiences, influence and enhance the quality of life. You know, that really works when you're writing an FDA grant. Um, identify and promote opportunities to develop themes and themes was one of the, is one of the things that we have spent a lot of time on. Um, that helped define, define American culture and character. Um, and actually to get some status and be recognized as an umbrella organization for collaboration along the corridor, you know, people think, oh, well, I'm Stewartsville or I'm Brookfield or I'm Cameron and they don't look outside that and so we're really trying to help people open their eyes and, and understand that collaboration and conversation with each other helps promote the whole region and helps with economic development in it um, and and we don't want to supplant any of the individual attractions that are there we want to include them and um, make them part of the whole story and presentation, but not take them over. We don't want to run anything. We just want to be a path for conversation and collaboration, quite honestly. Okay, so did I say we're all volunteer? We're all volunteer, um, which is a challenge. Um, it, it really is. We are membership based. We put together a membership program, which we are in the process of looking at revamping um, because we're not charging anybody nearly enough to be part of it. But we are membership based. Our annual budget is less than $10,000. Um, 
The larger destinations, however, kind of pick up some of the slack. Um, and the only, only two larger destinations we really have are St. Joe and uh, Hannibal, larger convention bureaus. Everybody else is like a one-man operation, two-man operation, part of economic development, um, not really focused 100% at tourism, but we're working on it. So we have had some accomplishments in the past 10 years. We have a website, mohighway36.com. Go look at it and tell us what's wrong with it because we really need to revamp it and we're working on it. Um, we have a Facebook page. Our challenge is to get our partners and our members to give us stuff to put on the Facebook page. There's plenty out there, but this is not their primary focus. So we have to work with our partners and our members to have this a little bit more top of mind to give us content. We have um, actually, I don't know that I have it on here. When um, Highway 36 was completed at four lane, MoDOT along with us produced a audio or a CD, an audio video that takes you from St. Joseph to Hannibal. It's, you know, a story that you can listen to all the way around along and from Hannibal to St. Joseph. Cool, cool piece. And thank you, MoDOT, for doing that. I don't know if you guys are around or not, um, but it's outdated. It's 10 years old. So we are now putting, transferring this into a guide go presentation that will be an app on your phone, thanks to the Missouri Humanities Council who gave us a grant to do that. So we're updating that and making that relevant and usable. You know, most people's cars don't even have a CD player in them anymore. Mine does, because I'm old and cheap. Um, we went through, we've done an inventory of sites and locations and stories across the state which was intensive. We, we spent a year and a half doing that. And we've got it, but it, it's continually changing. We have an annual newsletter that we send out. And you know, I found that this is very effective. Instead of just sending out membership notices for dues, send them a newsletter. Don't, don't assume that they're gonna have it on a website or email or anything, send them a piece of paper that has color pictures on it. We had bigger renewals this year on our membership than we did in the past. And I, I truly believe it's because we sent them something they could hold in their hand and they couldn't just click and delete. Um, we have an annual meeting, which we didn't have last year. We participate in Great North Way West days in Jefferson City, where you come to the legislators and talk about your stuff. Um, we have another Missouri Humanities Council grant that we're getting ready to apply for. And, and one of the biggest ones is the USDA grant that we got a couple of years ago for strategic planning. And it was based upon rural communities. And we went through an entire strategic planning session with that money and it has really helped us focus and you'll see a little bit more about that later. Visitors guides, we have produced four visitors guides. They are um, every other year and it's a great piece. We contract with the St. Joseph News Press. They go out and do all the ad sales and we write the content. Now if we went out and did the ad sales, we could make a ton of money but we're all volunteer. I don't have time to go out and sell ads in the Highway 36 guide. So we make a, a pittance on it, but it's still a wonderful um, publication. We've developed some trails. We have the quilt trail, which is incredible. We have 14 quilt um, shops along the Highway 36 corridor and they come together and they actually put their whole program together. They, um, each quilt shop, well, first they decide on a theme and then each quilt shop 
designs their own quilt block that goes along with the theme. And you go through each quilt shop and get the block and you finish it and you make your quilt. You can do it online too. You can get them online and, and purchase them. We have people coming in from Texas, Arizona. They call us every year saying, what's the theme for this year? And I'm coming up and I'm dragging my husband along with me and they do. Um, and we're going to go through all the quilt shops and they finish their quilt and there's prizes. And that has been one of our most successful themed events or activities along Highway 36. And kudos to all those quilt shops. We, we did a motorcycle trail where they went along and they had a passport. You'll see that later. We've, we've done some work with public relations. Um, and we've had, this is not an exhaustive list, articles in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, Midwest Living, um, the Missouri, Missouri Humanities Council Magazine, and Suzanne Corbett, we're looking for you. Um, okay, we've, we've worked with Andrew McRae with American Countryside Broadcasts. He is just awesome for our market. He is exactly right bike route, Hannibal to St. Joseph, and also got our articles of incorporation done. That was the hardest thing. Here's three of the um, visitor's guides. I would say in St. Joe, when people come in, they'd rather take the Highway 36 visitor's guide than ours. And here's the most recent one that has the balloon festival in, uh, Brookfield. So actually we've done four of them and they're great and they pay for themselves. Our only challenge as a volunteer organization is distribution and getting them where they need to go because, you know, nobody has mailing money to do it. And we try and work with the vendor to do that, but it's a challenge, but at least Amy and I are not out there on the streets trying to sell ads. So um, here's some other publications that we've done. You see the motorcycle passport, which you stamped everything. Um, three of the quilt trail brochures. Um, one was churches around the world. One was seasonal sensations. We had one a couple of years ago that was barns. And so everybody did some kind of a barn design, which was kind of fun. And this is kind of, there's a, I don't know if you can see this, whatever. Um, it's a brochure, this one's laminated, but they go to each quilt shop and get a stamp so that they completed it. And then they send a picture of their quilt. Um, I'm telling you, I'm not a quilter, but it seems to work. So that's cool with me. Hey, Marcy, before you go on to your next uh, topic, we yes, had someone that asked if you could go back to the map um, I'm assuming it's the one with the big yellow belt um, to show those boundaries again. Yeah. Um, this person, Marvin, is asking if Weston, Missouri is inside those boundaries. Do we have, I mean, I know it's a very small oh, map. Yeah, it goes, it goes down to Gladstone Liberty. Sure. Atchison, okay. Leavenworth. Yeah. Weston's in there. Great. Well, there you it's, go, Marvin. It's 36 <laughs> and then, miles. Yeah. And then uh, someone also asked, did you mention something or so, show something about an 888? number no oh there's someone asked about um if there's an eight uh, who answers the phone number but i'm not sure what uh, we we actually don't have a phone number okay. i mean for years it was the saint joe cdb mm -hmm. but um we we just take uh things over the internet i mean request that way but certainly call the saint joe cdb 1-800-785-0360. Okay. And we will do whatever we can. We won't be able to answer every question about the quilt trail. Sure. That's a separate subcommittee, um, but we will do everything we can. Okay, great. We're all volunteers, remember. And then uh, Amy Supple, hi Amy. <laughs> um, she's in Chillicothe. Uh, mm -hmm. She uh, went ahead and reiterated the website for anybody that wants to take a look. Um, Mo Highway HWY. 36.com. Um, so sorry for the interruption, but yes, continue on. Oh, I think you were fine. on theme development. Is that where we were? Okay.
theme development. Um, I think I said we spent a lot of time in our early year, year and a half on different themes. Oh my gosh, we have a zillion themes that we came up with. Agricultural themes, wineries, um, quilt trail, which we've actually worked on, outdoor recreation, all the DNR spots and all the conservation spots along Highway 36 need to be packaged together. And we really need to work on partnerships with those agencies. We had one with DNR a number of years ago and with conservation, but we really haven't followed up on it as their leadership has changed. Um, we probably have 40 themes. Here are just a few of them, innovation and entrepreneurship, military leadership. You've got the Elmer Bradley, the John J. Pershing, the Ulysses S. Grant, all that stuff. So what we need to do is take a sieve and figure what stays on the top and focus upon that first and keep the rest of the chaff because it will be usable. But it was an interesting exercise and it was fun to find out that we have more than just geniuses along Highway 36. It's not just Mark Twain and J.C. Penney and Walt Disney and the Pony Express. There's a whole lot of other themes that families and travelers like to glam onto. So you start with your big ones and then you feed them the others. Is kind of my deal. Okay, so we have some target opportunities, which we know, more marketing materials, print more brochures and kill more trees. Um, a big one that we really need to do is work on membership development. And that one is going to take some time. Um, it's hard to do when you're running your own bureau or your own office to try and convince people to become a part of this and show them that there is benefit for them. And visibility and recognition. Um, one of the things I really want to do in the long run, I don't know if it'll ever happen, um, is, and it takes a lot of time to do it, is get Highway 36 designated as a state scenic byway or a federal scenic byway. I think it can happen. I just have to read all the little federal government stuff and try and figure out how to do it or get somebody that really knows how to do it to volunteer to do it for us. So anybody out there that knows how to do that, call me, please. Um, we need to do additional legislative outreach at the state and federal level. I, I told you how many um, House representatives we have here in the state of Missouri and Senate and Sam Graves, we don't do a good job of communicating with them on a regular basis about what we're doing, what we are, who we are. Um, and we really need to focus on that. And we need to focus on increased member engagement. Our biggest challenge on the board is getting people who are engaged and who will stay engaged because it's volunteer um, and who make it a priority. So, I, if anybody has any ideas on how to engage people and keep them engaged, let me know. Okay, so um, we applied for a USDA grant um, in 2018 and we got it for rural development and all of that. And it was one for us to do strategic planning. So um, we invited Bill Geist who a lot of you who are in the tourism industry are familiar with. He's kind of a guru in strategic planning for destinations, for DMOs, destination marketing organizations, sports commissions, all of that kind of thing. And he came in and spent some time with us. And we actually came out with a strategic plan because before, you know, we'd been doing the quilt trail, we'd been doing the motorcycle trail, we'd been all over the place and we really weren't very focused. So he got us focused. <clears throat> We've got colored boxes and we have things that we can check off. And I am pleased to say that we've done a number of these things so far. Um, one of the 
main things um, on the second one over, engage an executive director to oversee programming and engage with members. We have actually hired on contract a person part-time. That's not exactly what he's doing, but he's keeping us organized. And his name is Bob Frohoff. A number of you probably know him. He worked with MMG um, Worldwide, who was the um, advertising agency of record for the Division of Tourism for many years. And he worked with, um, oh, Better Homes and Gardens and whatever that organization is out of um, Des Moines. But he has kind of helped us stay organized because Amy is our president. She didn't have time to do all this. I'm the secretary treasurer. I don't have, so he kind of keeps us organized. So that's the thing I'm most proud that we have actually done. And um, we can't afford it, but we're looking for ways to, to continue to pay for it. And that may be through changing our membership um, structure. But all these things, I mean, it's taken everything that runs around in your brain and put it, it, putting it into little categories so you can like check them off. And I love that. And it was a wonderful process for us. And I think probably in the next year, we probably are going to have to go back and revisit it. It's actually like a 40 page document, but I'm not sharing that with you unless you want it. If you want it, I'd be happy to share it with you. It has strategies and each of the objectives and action items and all of that. And so, I'm thinking the next steps are follow up on this strategic plan, more partnerships with state agencies, because that has really helped us and it has helped the agencies as well. Um, I know the state parks take out an ad in our visitor's guide, but I'd love to have more of a conversation with them about what we can do collaboratively um, same thing with Division of Tourism, same thing with Conservation, same thing with Humanities Council, um, all of those. So I, I think that's an important step for us. Um, and number three and number four are question marks. Who knows? You know, um, it just adds up to a lot of work. There's a lot of work that needs to be done and we have to assume that we're bright enough, smart enough, and um, energized enough to get it done, and that we believe in the concept. It's the way of American genius, so we should be geniuses in getting it done, I feel. One thing I would like to do is thank our board. Our board works really hard, even though they have full-time jobs, um, but they're engaged, and, and we have to keep people engaged. Amy Seppel from Chillicothe is our president. Kelly Petrie from Macon is on our board and has been from the very beginning. Tim Wimes and Cameron is on the board. Megan Rapp from Hannibal. Hannibal CBB um, has been there since the beginning. Meg Gasway in Hamilton kind of um, represents the quilt trail and, and that whole thing and Hamilton has come on board. Um, Kay Mallins in Marceline, you guys all know Kay, with Walt Disney's hometown, and she lives in his childhood home. Uh, Becky Cleveland for Brookfield is with their economic development group. She has been very, very good, uh, a very good asset to our organization. Jerry Eisterhold, some of you know him, Eisterhold and Associates, who uh, do exhibit design and planning. He's been on board since the very beginning. He's been our odd fit because he's not a destination or anything, but he dreams up things and dreams about how to program and how to present things. So he has been wonderful. Um, and recently we um, welcomed Bob Froha. So it's, it's a good group. Um, Sometimes you think you've run a thousand miles and sometimes you think you're not moving fast enough. But I think that's how it is with a regional organization and we all help each other. 
I'm signing off. Awesome. Thank you, Marcy. That was a, a really great um, overview of just, I mean, exactly what I think people need to hear, which is, you know, you talked about how this was two people with an idea and then having a, a goal of this is something that we feel needs to be done and, and taking us through that whole process of how you got it done. Um, and, and, and I like it's that. It's not done. It's not well, done. <laughs> sure. And what I, what I was going to say is, you know, the fact that, you know, you're, you're not advertising yourselves as, you know, this is, this is complete. This is, you know, what you should aspire to be, but you, you advertise yourselves as we know that we still have work to be done, help us. And, you know, this is what we have to offer. And I think that that's great, you know, because so many people I think are in that idea stage and don't know how to just do. And I think you got, you, you didn't be job afraid. Don't yeah. be afraid. Just do it. Um, so we, as some uh, questions roll in, I, I jotted down some comments and some topics to kind of pursue further that might spark some, uh, some more questions from people. Um, first off, someone did ask about a recording of this session. So uh, this is recorded and uh, it's currently um, on our Facebook page. So it's being broadcast live. And then once the webinar ends, it'll be just housed on our Facebook page. So you can go on there. Um, the page is Missouri Humanities Council, and you can share it from there. Um, and then it'll also be available as a YouTube video. That'll take a little more, more time because it has to be converted and then put on our YouTube page. So I would imagine maybe sometime next week, it'll be on YouTube and our website. Um, but I like, um, and for those of you, which I think there are several people that are on right now that were part of this morning session too. And uh, I think there's a lot that carries over from what Lori was talking about, um, especially this, um, Marcy, you mentioned something about, you know, at first it was like, well, if, I, if I'm working in Hannibal, you know, why are you promoting a different town? Why are you working to, you know, to when you should be you know, working on your own community? Um, and I think that's a very common question. I mean, I, th I think especially with smaller communities, um, they feel the need to focus on themselves because they, they, they're a, a <laughs> small fish in a big pond. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's so important, especially for small communities that maybe don't have every luxury to work with their neighboring communities. Because if you don't have one thing, the community over might and you can work together to form the, the full experience. And I think that's something that, you know, you guys realize, you know, in the Highway 36, because, you know, you don't have major cities kind of benchmarking you like Highway 70 does. You don't have St. Louis and Kansas City and then Columbia in the middle. You, you truly are this rural portion of Missouri with a lot of great towns with great options. Um, and I love that you, uh, you started with this overall theme. So you mentioned that it's the, the, the way of the genius, you know, and, and what, you know, you, you went to these communities and you said, okay, well, this is our theme and you've got this person and you've got this person. And what do you know? Like it link, it, it connects us all. So, but then taking that as your overall theme, using that to draw people in and then attracting them to more, you know, doesn't mean that you can't market your other museums or your restaurants or your shops, but you're finding out what this corridor has in common, drawing people in and then keeping them there longer by showing what else you have or what's just the next town over. Um, and I think that's really important. It's, it's, it's that creating critical mass and then you know, keeping people there to spend more time and more money, obviously. That's, what, that's the end game, right? Spending money. <laughs> um, so, so I really like that your this stress is working together and not competing against one another. Um, again, if you want to ask questions, we have the chat box and that Q&A feature. So as more roll in, I, I've got endless comments, so I can keep going. Um, so one thing that uh, I thought was great was that you, when you sat down and you planned out what this what this is going to be. You had that the page on your PowerPoint that was like your list of goals. Um, and I know this is still kind of a fairly new alliance, but has there been any talk or have you since um, like reviewed those goals and reevaluated or changed them? Or do you have a plan to like, you know, is it like a five-year plan to where in five years we're gonna 
go back and look at where we were and what we've accomplished and kind of adjust as necessary, kind of talking about, you know, how you adjust as time goes on and as you accomplish more. Well, um, we did our strategic planning in 2019 and we revisit that every year, mm -hmm. um, if not more often. And I certainly would love to have Amy Supple jump in and explain a little more of that if, if she wants to, she's our president. Um, we are continually looking at that. And just because one of those is our goal, it may not be our highest priority and it might drop off because we're spending more energy as volunteers on another aspect of it. And, and actually the challenge is we want to do it all, but we can't all at once. We don't have a staff of 10 people. If we had a staff of 10 people, we could put one person on each of those things. So we have to kind of pick and choose and see which one makes the biggest rash at the time um, and take care of that one and uh, which one um, is showing the most growth and really give it a little more love. And it's just kind of a work in progress. And certainly Amy or anybody else on the Alliance, jump in if Caitlin will let you. Yeah. Um, and, and going off of that, you know, I, I love that you guys did a, a formal strategic plan. Um, I've been involved in one of those from Missouri Humanities. We did one when we developed the German Heritage Corridor. Mm -hmm. um, and and it, they can be pricey, um, but I think they're so worth it. That it's something that can easily be applied for a grant for if you don't have the funds to do it. But I mean, for myself, as the person that runs that corridor program, having that strategic plan is so important for keeping you on track, like you said. Exactly. And, and then what you mentioned with... Um, you have so many ideas and you have so many things you want to do and having somebody come and be an outsider's perspective and tell you, okay, of what you're telling me, this is what you should focus on. And, right. and being kind of that, that third party that lets you know where your priority should be and then lays them out in a way that's doable. It keeps you on track and it lets you know where your priority should lie. And then I don't know, I'm not sure if, if your guys' strategic plan did it for you, but our strategic plan for the court, the German heritage corridor, um, laid out our action plan over 10 years. So it was like, here are your priorities for the first three years. Here are your priorities for the following three and a half years. And then the next, you know, so it was like one to three, three to five or four to six, and then seven to 10. So it also kind of like gives you that idea of where you can take this and gives you, gives you product essentially for, for many years to come and lets you know that this is sustainable and this is something that is actionable. Um, so I, I highly suggest anybody that's got an idea like you guys did, like we did with the corridor, um, to once you kind of hone in your ideas and you do have to have a lot kind of already formulated and rolling around to, to, to get to that strategic planning process, but, but that is such a great tool and totally and, worth the money. Yeah, and also, I mean, if you are working with rural communities, I cannot recommend more the United States Department of Agriculture mm -hmm. and their grant program. They get it. They know that Stewartsville cannot afford to do this, but that we going together can do it. Um, and Caitlin, they did not, it's not a 10 year thing. There are just some steps and I've been involved with like 10 year plans and gosh, by the time you get to year five, 10, that, that's not appropriate because everything's changed mm -hmm. since then. So that's why we're kind of looking at ours every year, every couple of years and kind of fine tuning the end result because mm -hmm. it's going to change. You know, who knew that COVID was going to oh, happen? Oh, absolutely. Man, that, that put everybody behind it. We right. And, I, and I think that's such a good point is, is remaining fluid and remaining open right. to change because your priorities change. Um, yeah, I just mean, because lost... it's on paper doesn't mean you have to do it. <laughs> oh, right. And someone asked about choosing a strategic plan partner. Um, I think the few times that we've either needed to contract with somebody or we've gotten a proposal, we've, I think we've done kind of peer review. Like I've, I've reached out to like museums, use them a lot. Um, you could reach out to bigger organizations. Um, 
you know, really I would, I would start with your peers, um, start with, you know, go to Marcy, go to me. We, we found someone, he actually was out in California, but, um, it was a single guy, a single person, not like a firm, um, that just does this for a living. And he came, he, we flew him out and we spent two days in kind of a, yeah. um, symposium type setting. We had lots of collaborating right. partners and we just spent two days, you know, talking and idea hashing. And it's really just a great, you know, in addition to having that end result of a strategic plan, it's a really great brainstorming, um, session and just getting to know people who have similar interests and that are interested in seeing your plan succeed. Um, so, so I and would it say makes you feel good. It, it makes does. you feel good to right. sit there in that. And, and it's like, we're being creative. This is cool. I'm not just sitting here answering my phone. Well, and it's nice too, I think, because especially when it's, it's an idea that you're trying to get to fruition, it validating to, to have this end product of a strategic plan. So even though you have yet to do the action items to have that document in your hand, it lets you know, okay, this is something that we can do. You know, this guy said so. He put it in a plan for us. So, um, so uh, to the person that asked about finding a part, a strategic plan person, um, you know, start with um, asking local museums. Start with asking, um, you know, state agencies who they might recommend. Um, sometimes bigger agencies, I think maybe the National Endowment for the Humanities, they might have like a resource guide on strategic planners. Um, but aside from that, you know, the other step to that is finding partnerships in your region or in your community who have that same goal and are willing to work with you to accomplish it, to be part of that planning with you. Um, so it's not just going to be you and the staff at your museum or your convention and visitors bureau. It's going to be other partners that have that want to see that end goal as well. And they're gonna be the ones that are helping you develop ideas and, and figuring out how to make them you know, doable. So that's and really you important. You don't really too. have to go to national. I mean, every community or every region has people that are really good at strategic planning, mm -hmm. like maybe through your community foundation or your state association or something like that. I mean, we brought Bill Geist in from Wisconsin, but he loves us, so he didn't charge as much. Um, <laughs> well, you could probably he, check with like the extension offices too, right. Missouri Extension, right. uh, mm -hmm. extension. Um, places like that, just, you know, local agencies that would likely have used people in the past or even maybe have people on staff. Um, that's right. where I would start, yeah. Um, hold on, let me dismiss that. And another thing, um, going back to this uh, idea of this regional effort and the importance of working together with communities and not isolating yourself, um, one tip is that funders, people who are going to give you grant money and, and sponsorships are way more attracted to projects that have partners and collaboration. If you are um, you know, somebody that's looking for a grant for a strategic plan, or um, you know any other project for your community or your organization, when someone's looking at a grant application, and I say this as an organization that we accept grants, it's a lot more. It makes us. It makes you appear as though you're going to be more successful if you have other partners, other communities, other organizations that are backing you on this. That say, hey, yes, this person also thinks this is a great idea, and they're going to partner with us on it. Um, so I think you know. If you need any more evidence as to why it's great to, to not compete with one another and to work with one another, it's that people that give you money want to see that other people support your goals. Um, so I think that that's incredibly important to remember as well. Um, and Marcy, I had a question for you. So yes. you mentioned your guys' operating budget um, yeah. was about $10,000 or less. Um, you know, I think that makes this seem so doable, you know? Oh, it's not easy. But, you know, we have $36,000 in the bank. Not bad. Yeah. So, there you go. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, by doable, I just mean, you know, you don't have to have a $1.5 million budget no. to do what no. you guys do. If you have people that are your partners that are committed, they will take on certain things. I mean, my, my organization took on the postage for a year, for example. Amy's organization has taken on the cost of our annual meeting as you know a one-time thing. Macon, um, Kelly in Macon 
runs the hotels there. She gives us free meeting space for our annual meeting. Um, everybody has to be committed and put some flint in the game. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you want to see it work, you do that. And so maybe our cash is only 10,000, but our in kind is probably 25,000. Sure. And, and I know that you said that you have um, communities that pay dues, but where else does the, does your operating budget come from? Um, communities, quilt shops pay 50 bucks a year to be a member. Mm -hmm. um, uh, restaurants, museums, um, everything along Highway 36 can be a member. We have a voting membership right now that's $200, a regular membership that's 50, which is all under review right now per our strategic plan, because supposedly it's the best deal on the planet. <laughs> and uh, so that's changing here soon. We just haven't gotten there yet. Um, but that's actually where our revenue comes from, from our membership dues. Mm -hmm. And you guys are a 501c3, so you guys apply for grants. Obviously, you've gotten grants from Missouri Communities. You got the USDA grant. Um, so, I mean, I think you Division guys Division of that, Tourism. We, yeah, we have so you guys, you guys, just, you guys are a great example of not just this regional effort, but that, you know, for such an expansive region of, of, of communities, um, you guys do a, something really great on low budget. And I think that, you know, cause I think money is the first thing people see when they want to do this, a big project, when they have a big idea. And I think that, you know, obviously we tell people all the time, oh, look for grants, look for sponsorships, but you know, it's great to be an example of, hey, you don't need this massive operating budget. You know, you, you right. explain and how you keep costs low. What you have to have is time. It takes time to read through and figure out what the heck is going on with those grants. It takes time to put a grant together. Um, and so, I mean, it, it just takes a lot of time and somebody has to be committed. A, a group of people have to be committed to doing that because you can't, you don't just call up the Humanities Council and say, hey, I want this grant. No, you have to fill out this paperwork and you have to have it correct. Same thing with six weeks of lead of time. <laughs> exactly. And send it in ahead of time so they can review it and come back and say, you're totally stupid on this one. So you can change it. Um, and that would be my advice to anybody who's writing a grant, um, send it in ahead of time and have it reviewed before you send it in for the final. Don't, don't uh, rely on spell check. I've read <laughs> enough. I've read enough grants that if, if it's the grammar is incorrect, it's like, oh my gosh, these people, if they can't do a complete sentence without ending with a preposition, <laughs> they can't use our money effectively. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. No, you're fine. Um, so we're getting to the end of our time here. I don't have any more questions, um, but I think this is a great discussion. Marcy, thank you so much for talking about really the, the grassroots organization that is Missouri or Highway 36 Heritage Alliance. You did a great job of, um, of being passionate and of talking about this idea that you guys had that you, know, you made into a reality. And I think that you know, to be, you know, that's the point of these workshops that we do is to give you real examples um, of local, not just real, but local examples of, of how ideas can become a reality and how it's doable. So we, I, you know, I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to do this for us. Well, thank you, Caitlin. And seriously, anybody that wants to contact myself at the St. Joseph CVB or any of our other board members, Amy Seppel and Chillicothe is our president. Please contact us, go to our website and you'll see everybody listed there. And um, it's, the website needs some work, so please don't be critical, but we're all <laughs> volunteers. So uh, just happy to share. And if you have any ideas for us, let me know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon. You guys have been a great audience and uh, please remember um, that that survey is gonna pop up on your screen when I end this webinar. Please take a few minutes to fill it out. I'm sure Marcy wants to know how she did. We oh, of course absolutely. want to know if we picked a good presenter. So uh, so thank so you guys all cash. for- Send cash. <laughs>
thank you guys all for taking the time to do that for us. Um, again, this has been recorded, so it'll be, it's available on our Facebook page. And then I hope sometime next week, it'll be on our YouTube channel and our, um, our, our website as well. And that'll be all three of the presentations we see today. So um, thank you again. I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon. Um, and it looks like summer's here. So enjoy the 90 degree weather, everybody. <laughs> thank you.